In this video, we will try to understand microorganisms and diseases transmission. Microorganisms are organisms that are too small to be seen clearly with the naked eyes. So, of course, they can only be seen with the light microscope. In the past, people knew diseases existed, but as to how they were transmitted was still not unknown. So, although Frank Castro and a few others had made some suggestions that invisible organisms produce diseases, most still believe they were caused by supernatural and soil poisonous flavors called miasmas. Therefore, they would view that an imbalance the four main humors of this miasmas causes the disease. The four humors were the blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. This was widely accepted even since the time of the Greek physician Galen. Over time, the support for the germ theory of diseases began to accumulate, even as far as the 19th century. But it was one of the studio Bassi who first demonstrated that microorganisms called diseases when he experimented in 1835, trying to find the root cause of the silkworm disease and fungal infection. His observations clearly put to rest of the fact that the silkworm disease was responsible or the silkworm disease came about as a result of fungal infection. He also went on to say that a lot of other microorganisms causes other diseases. In 1485, M.J. Beckley proved that the great potato blight disease of Ireland was caused by a fungus. Now, following his successes, with a study of fermentation, Louis Pasteur was asked by the French government at the time to investigate into the peppering disease of silkworm that had threatened the silk industry. After several years of work, he was able to demonstrate that that disease was caused by a protozoan. How did he deal with this? Louis Pasteur brought this disease under control when he raised several armies of caterpillars from eggs produced by healthy month but then i must say that the indirect evidence that microorganisms were the agent of human diseases came from the work of an english surgeon known as joseph lister his work was primarily on the prevention of wound infections when one had a wound on his body lister impressed with past studies on involvement of microorganisms in fermentation and petrifaction developed a system of antiseptic surgery. This is designed to prevent microorganisms from entry wounds. So for instance, if one had an amputated limb or a cut through an accident, he was of the view that once we employ antiseptic means by trying to prevent the involvement of microorganisms by making sure the wound was clean, then one could heal faster. Based on this, he suggested that the instruments that were used in surgery should be heat sterilized and as much as possible phenols should be used on surgical dressing and even he was also the view that before surgery occurs in your room there was a need to spray the entire room with phenol this approach was a remarkable success and this has transformed surgery even after joseph lister published his first work in 1867 it would be interesting to note that the findings also provided a very strong indirect evidence of the role of microorganisms in disease transmission because according to him phenols which killed bacteria also prevented wounds from getting infected robert Koch, the first confirmatory demonstration of the role of microorganisms in disease transmission came from the study of the anthrax disease by a German physician, Robert Koch. He employed the criteria proposed by his former teacher, Jacob Hennel, and with this, he was able to establish the linkages between bacillus anthracis and the anthrax disease. Basically, he was a view that once an individual suffers from bacillus anthracis, or one individual suffers from the anthrax disease, there was the causative organism that is the bacillus anthracis that was responsible. So his criteria became known as the cause postulate. 
and this is being still being used by a lot of microbiologists to establish the linkages between diseases and microorganisms that are responsible for causing that disease. So cause postulate. Cause postulate is simply the causal relationship between microorganisms and the disease they cause. Robert Koch was able to explain the Cox postulate when he first injected a healthy mice with materials from a mice that had anthrax disease and all the healthy mice became ill. Then after he transferred anthrax or the bacteria for causing anthrax from Neculum into a series of 20 mice and he also at the same time made sure he inoculated the same bacillus anthrax on a piece of beef serum. Over time, the bacillus grew, they reproduced, and produced spores in the beef serum. When he isolated bacillus or spores from the serum and injected these into healthy mice, the healthy mice again developed the disease. With this, he was able to prove that the bacillus anthritis was responsible for causing the anthra disease, and his criteria for proving these linkages became known as the cause postulate and that is being used widely by many microbiologists. So the cause postulate had four main thematic areas. The first one was that the microorganisms that are responsible for causing a particular disease must be present in every case of the disease, but absent in organisms that are healthy. Two, the suspected microorganisms that are responsible for causing a particular disease must be capable of being isolated and even grown in a pure culture. 3. The same disease must result when an isolated organism or when the isolated microorganisms is inoculated in a healthy host. And finally, the same microorganism must be isolated again from the host. So, several people have used these cox postulates to establish a link between other diseases. So, for the purpose of this lecture, I would use a research work that I did to explain the causal relationship between Mycobacterium ulcerans and Bolluri ulcer. In my case, I was trying to establish that when an individual living in an area with high level of arsenic or with exposure of the Mycobacterium ulcerans, one could have clinical symptoms of the disease. And so, I was trying to demonstrate this. A lot of microbiologists have used cause postulates to establish the linkages between diseases and microorganisms responsible for them. In this lecture or in this on this slide, I try to use the Cox postulate to explain a disease known as Bolluri ulcer. But then I was looking at arsenic exposed individual. Bolluri ulcer is an ulcerative disease of the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and sometimes bone. It is caused by Mycobacterium ulcerans. The disease normally starts as a pimple that is very rigid to touch with no pain. But then, if not left, if left untreated over time, it turns into an ulcer where it covers the entire area of an individual. But with time, even if it's not, there is no treatment, there is healing, but patients are left with permanent contractual deformities. And so, I was interested in looking at the susceptibility of arsenic exposed. ICR mice to the development of Bolluri ulcer. To be able to do this, I looked at an experimental cross-sectional cohort study where I linked my study to three basic areas. That was the clinical examination, hematological evaluation, and histopathological assessment. Before the start of my study, I needed my inoculum, that is my bacteria extract. I needed my mice, and I needed my water containing arsenic. For my inoculum, I use a sterile swab to pick margins of these active ulcerated ulcers and then I send them to the lab to do DNA isolation and DNA magnification where I realized that the patient was suffering from Bolluri ulcer and so I was able to confirm the presence of Mycobacterium ulcerans. I used microscopy, specifically the nursing test and I was able to also confirm it was Mycobacterium ulcerans. Then I had to grow them on this Lewis ingesting media for a period of 12 weeks. This was an animal study, so I needed 
18 mice that were six week old they were healthy specifically they were rcr mice rcr icr simply means inbreeding control region mice i placed them in eight groups of 10 and then i labeled them a to h then i monitored all of them for signs of mortality and emaciation to get my water containing arsenic i identify a bullet ulcer endemic community in ghana specifically in the shanty region to to be the, to be precise i monitored their water for drinking and for other domestic purposes for level of arsenic and i realized that their levels of arsenic were very high ranging between 0 0.8 to 4.8 milligram per liter using this benchmark i prepared my stock solutions of arsenic trichloride but taking into consideration the body weight of the mice i had three controls control one control two control three for control one the mice were only given tap water and nothing else for control two they were given water containing arsenic at 4.8 milligram per liter and control three they were given normal tap water but in addition i gave them doses of mycobacterium or serums. i then monitored them for 14 days after the 14 days i needed to prepare my inoculum so using the standard um phosphate buffer solution maintained at a ph of seven i diluted them with my cultured macrobacterium oxyrons where i compared my inoculum to five mafalan standard they were approximately containing 7.5 times 10 raised to the power 6 colony unit using a sterile string and needle i inoculated my mice through the hind poles intraplantally where i gave these mice 0.05 mils of my inoculum my so these were given to mice that were grouped in um, group a to e just like i said but then for the, the three controls it was only the last control that i i gave the inoculum then i monitored them for some time after 112 days i realized that mice of all the groups that i had that were given levels of emulsions had developed symptoms that were similar to that of bullery ulcer but then i must say that the onset of the ulcers and how severe they were were synonymous with the levels of arsenic in water that i gave to my mice i must say that the mice that were not given emulsions did not develop any emulsion positive lesions the mice that were given water contained arsenic only also developed similar lesions but then when i took samples from these i realized that it was only the mice that were given m oserons inoculum that were positive for the disease but the mice that were not given the oserons were negative for the disease this went on to support that cox postulate was in play when i realized my mice were dying i have harvested three mice each from each of the group i took their blood about one mil of their blood and I analyzed them for some changes in their hematological status, specifically WBC, RPC, HBC, and then also harvested liver, spleen, lungs, heart, and kidney for histopathological analysis. My results show that the mice that were given high doses of arsenic, 3.6 to 4.8, and even the control that was all given arsenic, had a significant reduction in w, wbc numbers the same thing was also seen for my rgw and rgw sd for histopathological analysis i did my tissue grossing i did my tissue processing i did my waxing microtomy slide examination after the slides were dried and the results show that there was a dose response damage in the cells of the liver the same thing was also applied to the cells of the spleen. So in conclusion, I was able to achieve that the mice that were given M oxyrons developed bullery ulcer. And then those mice that were given water containing arsenic, in addition to the bullery ulcer, developed the ulcers faster compared to those that were given ordinary tap water, supporting the cause postulate. Thank you.